Hey guys, welcome to sorry. Our, our engineer yells go like a muppet at the end of our countdown every morning. And it always go! Go! I mean, he's uh, kind of a Kermit, so. Yeah. Uh, hey, welcome to the show, guys. Welcome to SJU. Uh, NBC has their entry into the streaming wars coming out this week in the form of Peacock. Uh, so, uh, much like we did for HBO Max, we're going to jump in. We're going to give you uh, a, a big preview of of Peacock. Um, all the cock talk you guys want uh, this week to sort talk of and cock, baby. Know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we got to walk the walk. We got to talk the cock. Um, <laughs> and it is all in support of Direct Relief and Black Lives Matter. Uh, we've got links in the description of how you guys can get involved uh, and support. Uh, thank you very much. So yeah, uh, let's jump into it. Spencer J. Gilbert and Daniel Radford. Hi, how you guys doing? Hello. Hey, doing good. Hey. Uh, you ready to talk some Peacock? Heck yeah. Always. Hey, let's say always. Like when sometimes you're like, can we do it now? And I'm like, hang on. I know you're pumped about this. Um, can we play some cock rock for a cock talk? Yes, yeah, cock rock for cock talk. <laughs> Were you just uh, uh, actually, yeah. Uh, hey, you got your script open there, Spencer? Yeah, sure. Will you do uh, uh, this basic info as a cock rock song? <laughs> okay, so uh, that this is um, out this week. Okay, the pay six are out this week, Wednesday, July 15th. So pick up with half three cost tiers, unlimited one that's free, half its library, all inclusive one that's $4.99, and that's with ads. Oh! <laughs> And an all-inclusive one that's nine ninety nine without ads. Ooh! Sorry, I was trying to play eight drums like I'm in Rush. <laughs> it wasn't working out very well for me. And then, yeah, and then the drum breakdown happens, and then the bass player's like, has seven-day free trial for its premium tiers. <laughs> Website is PeacockTV.com. Spencer J. Gilbert. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Look at those fun. legs! Ooh! <laughs> Skimmy doo bop, peacock. Uh, <laughs> Sammy, Sammy Hagar better be uh, glad that you also don't want to open a bar in Florida because you were coming after both his jobs. So uh, as yeah, as I, I was doing uh, split kicks under my desk. You just couldn't see it. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> peacock. <laughs> leg going up. <laughs> when are you not, though, really? Um, <laughs> So uh, we're going to sort of split this into into two parts. We're going to go through the back catalog uh, that Peacock, a name that I, sorry, I, I have a hard time taking seriously. It's such a silly name. Um, uh, so we're going to sort of go through their back catalog and see if there's some stuff we're looking forward to, some standout titles, stuff like that. And then we're going to get into their originals and what's coming and uh, some of the trouble they've already sort of got out the gate because Peacock already Troubled Bird. Uh, so let's get into this. Uh, TV, right out the gate. Uh, some big comedy stuff. 30 Rock, Parks good. and Recreation. Good. Um, yep, good. Approved. Uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Cheers. Uh, Frasier. The internet loves Frasier, you guys. Uh, I love Frasier. You love Frasier, Danielle. Do you love Frasier? I'm, I'm kind of uh, surprised by the Frasier uh, renaissance. And I, you know what? I'm that dick now where I, when you are watching a show that's supposed to take place in New York, and then you see uh, that it is filmed right next to the law office you used to work at in LA. You're like, mm. and so I am that dick now that's like, okay, I'm from Seattle. Where is Frazier's apartment? Because it doesn't make sense with the skyline. But other than that, yeah, man, who doesn't like <laughs> Frazier? Uh, you know, I think you it, found it, a new podcast. <laughs> Where is Frazier's apartment? Where's Frazier's apartment? Where's Frazier's apartment? But yeah, so I, I like Frazier, but it's amazing how like uh, the internet, it feels like there'll be one show that's older that everyone will suddenly start watching again. And usually it's The Office, but Frasier has kind of started creeping in and everyone started watching it, which is, I think it's been on streaming for a while, but whatever. People yeah, love but, that Frasier. People Spencer, love why that do people Frasier. love that Frasier? Why do people love that Frasier? Um, it's just good. It's really good. Uh, there's, it's, uh, there's nothing more complicated than that it's just when sitcoms have great characters and it's like a great premise it's like mm -hmm. you know highbrow lowbrow uh, look at these uh, stuffy fools getting into a different uh, situation it's a situational comedy and they're great situations so you yep. don't overthink it. it look and it does star money planes kelsey Grammer, and it um, stars money planes kelsey Grammer. which is the Hell only yeah. way that i will introduce him from now on is money planes kelsey Grammer. 
I uh, I do hope that Cheers gets like a, a Frasier treatment uh, with uh, with the binge gang. Uh, great show. And if you've never watched Cheers, uh, maybe Peacock's your opportunity to start cranking through it because it is the it is the prequel to Frasier. <laughs> it is yeah, yeah the, it is the pre, it is the Phantom Menace of uh, of Frasier. Um, jump through a few more of these. Downton Abbey, Friday Night Lights, um, Monk. Yeah. I love Monk. Parents I actually, love Monk. Yeah. yeah. Monk should also get a binge. Uh, Tony Shalhoub is a treasure. Um, Will and Grace, The King of Queens, House, Saturday Night Live. Uh, I've never seen Friday Night Lights. Time to come clean. What? Oh, come on, Ooh. Joe. Yeah, I got to jump that on that. first season. Yeah, I, I like the whole thing. I, well, except the second season yeah, where the second M- season. MTV was like, uh, can you make it sexy? <laughs> and they, <laughs> and then they kill someone. Um, but it, it, it writes the ship even like halfway through the second season, it gets yeah. back to good. And, and then three is like the, he was in the wire, but it's like a real debut of Michael B. Jordan yeah. in season three right of on. Uh, Friday Night Lights. Are you saying that about halfway through season two, uh, coach had the cast take a knee? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I guess, take a knee. <laughs> Talked talk the show back into greatness. Um, yeah. uh, let's see, Saturday Night Live, uh, Xena Warrior Princess, you guys. Yes, 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 mm. yes, please. Thank you, it's thank you time. very much. Uh, no, no Hercules on the list, which is weird. That's uh, fine. Just, you know, just, you know, yeah, you know what? It is fine. Um, <laughs> Parenthood, uh, Two and a Half Men, Psych, Punky Brewster. That's the reboot, right? No, uh, no this is, is the, well, there is a reboot coming, but uh, the original uh, is also on there. Uh, so you okay. can catch up. We might have to do a cram it. <laughs> uh, we got- I'm confusing her with Blossom. Is she the one who's, who's got the hat or did they both have hats? Which one's a robot? Small one. Okay, so the robot is Small Wonder, and her name was Vicky. Um, uh, Punky Brewster is the one who used to wear two different color shoes, and she had the pigtails, and she uh, was a, a, an urchin who was adopted by a guy who always used to call her Punky. And then there was, um, I'm sorry, what was the third one? The third Blossom. one. Blossom. Blossom. Blossom was the one whose mom ran out on her, and she had the hats, and uh, her dad wrote jingles or something. And Joey Lowe's. Well, but none of them explained it all. Correct. Don't explained it all. No, no, no. That was saved for. Uh, that was saved for Clarissa. Okay. And also, thank you for noting that Blossom also features Money Planes Joey Lawrence. <laughs> Money Planes. <laughs> 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 uh, we got Money that Planes. saved by. We got that saved by the bell, you guys. That Battlestar Galactica, Married with Children, uh, all the Law and Orders you could ever want. So I feel like they've got the uh, my parents demo down, mm. just with the Law and Orders. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do they have the Chicago verse? Like, you know, Chicago Fire, Chicago PD, Chicago uh, pre fire, post PD. The list. I think the Chicago verse might still be up for grabs in the okay. streaming wars. They right. might. Well, that, that, then they haven't, until they've locked down that Bosch and Ray Donovan, then they can't fully control the boomers. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they they're really still in a lot of that like CBS audience with the two and a half men um mm-hmm. with uh all of the law and orders which again I mean they they prefer the CSIs but I feel like in a pinch a law and order could work. Um yeah, yeah it's interesting. Well they they also have a uh, uh, coach, great classic coach, uh leave it to beaver. It sounds weird li- uh reading these in a list uh together clumped together. Coach, leave it to beaver, Bates Motel, Covert Affairs <laughs> and Heroes. <laughs> Which, you know, I I always lump. Um Heroes, I the the rise and fall of Heroes was like fascinating to me. That was like the biggest show in the world for a minute and then very quickly was not. I mean, the first season was really, really good, and it suffered from, and a lot of shows do this, um, it suffered from second season lag, or because uh, I feel like either your first season, you're trying to get it together, and then your second season, you grow the beard and you get amazing, or you have this, like, really good, and, and I, I feel like the problem is usually, be, happens with shows where the first season is very tightly plotted, it is about one very specific thing with, like, very specific goals, and then once you are done telling that story and wrapping it in a bow, which many of them do because they don't know if they're going to get a second season, it's like, okay, well, now what do we do for season two? And that's when it always suffers. The same thing happened with, like, a Veronica Mars, where mm-hmm. it was very much about solving that mystery, and Heroes is very much about like, well, what does save the cheerleader, save the world mean? And then we found out and then they were, and, and then there was nothing they had. I don't know if they had planned how they were going to continue on with an even like a, a same compelling story for season two, because yeah. season one really does like wrap that series up. You don't really need more after that. Mm. They shouldn't have saved the cheerleader is what you're saying. Yeah. Don't save the cheerleader. Let yeah. That, Your cheerleader is in back. another castle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
in season two. The only reason I remember anything about Heroes is because it was just X Men plots. Yes. Like it was Days of Future Past and then the Legacy Virus. I was always, even back then, I was kind of like, why aren't they getting sued? Like this seems Hmm. bad. It was Jeff Jeff Loeb, right? Yeah, and it was Jeff Loeb was the showrunner, which was wild to me. He was just like, I'm taking my Marvel things and I'm taking them to not Marvel. Who can steal Um, from yourself? Yeah, look, yeah, if if you're gonna steal, steal from your own pocket, question mark. Uh, a lot of people probably mad at me for not liking heroes in the comments. Uh, but you know who loves heroes? Keeping up with the Kardashians. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. they, they kept up with heroes. Uh, the Mindy Project's on there. Superstore, Royal Pains, Two and a Half Men. Uh, so Warner Media was originally- uh, I, I'm just gonna pause and just briefly circle back to the Kardashians, Joe. Um, Absolutely. I was hoping you would say that. I forgot to mention this on our on our Quibi show. There's a f- pretty funny Quibi show about this. Like, there's a Kardashian. There's like a fail son Kardashian brother <laughs> that's not on any of the shows, and he has his own Quibi series. But Wait, it's, Rob? It's not Rob. Uh, maybe he's a Jenner. I don't know. Uh, the point is, is he is absolutely like I can't tell if it's a stone cold ruthless parody of what Keeping Up With The Kardashians is, and he's completely roasting his sisters, or if he really is like that vapid and thinks he's like one of them. I'm (laughs) sorry, I- go with B. I have to look this up because I know more about Rob Kardashian than I should. It's definitely not Rob. I'd never heard or seen of this guy, but he was like, it's really fun. It's kind of like Veep, but Kardashians, but maybe unintentional because he's like always off to the side on the photo shoots. (laughs) <laughs> anyways check out quibi if it still exists uh, uh look that up next week and keep up with that specific kardashian um yeah uh he is uh the the half man in uh the card i'm trying to just circle back to two and a half Cur- kirby oh, jenner kirby, kirby. Jenner. oh I've kirby jenner, of kirby jenner. <laughs> I, I can't tell if it's even real like he might be just <laughs> fake like a like a creation uh, of their mind's eye, but he's like the the other Kardashians are in it, and uh, yeah, he's like a secret twin that they kept in the basement. <laughs> but if you found out this was like a weird Nathan Fielder project, yeah, exactly, exactly. You could tell everyone was really excited about my Kardashian spinoff. Um, so uh, <laughs> Warner, so just talking about sort of like big spending on some of these like arguably flagship shows. Warner Media was originally bundling. Uh, Two and a Half Men with Big Bang Theory, like uh, like the worst uh, split DVD at Walmart uh, ever made. <laughs> um, but they split up the rights, and uh, so this did not go to HBO Max, despite it being uh, a WB show. Um, it is notable it t- because it cost a ton to get the rights to. They didn't uh, reveal the terms, specific terms of the deal, uh, but it also has like no previous connection to. NBC. So it seems like this was just a weird uh, free agent play for the Peacock. Uh, two and a half men. The, the sh- would that be the show you dump all your free agent money into? It was the biggest show in the world for what, like two years? Ten, ten seasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was yeah. Like ten years. And to be fair, it is very leading of me to be like, oh, this piece of shit. Hey, do you guys like this piece of shit? Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, I mean it, yeah, you're right. It was the biggest yeah. show for a long, long time. Yeah, and sometimes, look, uh, sometimes the streaming wars are not about art. Sometimes the streaming wars are about what's gonna get eyes on the product. And that's, people like those two men, they like the half man, they like the theme song. <laughs> people are really into it. The so, bowling shirts. The, the bowling shirts, they like the, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how much uh, weight the Charlie Sheen of it's gonna carry. But we'll see. I mean, I think if, if anything else, people are going to like go scroll directly to like his last episode and then the, the one where he blows up or whatever. Right. The one where he's claymation or something. Isn't so, it like crushed by a fridge or I don't know. Yeah, something like a about. piano falls on him. Yeah. yeah. And then Kutcher shows up where it, the series really hits its stride. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah. It truly is the hero season two of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> because they bring in Ashton and then the half man goes away and then it's Miley Cyrus for a while. I don't know why I know this. But yeah, I mean, people, it is- I'm impressed. It's, you know, uh, there's clearly a lot of quantity there and that is 
classically one of the heavy hitters. Again, I don't know if that one, I don't know if uh, Two and a Half Men is going to suddenly take over the internet a la a Frasier, but it, you know, the people, people liked it. It was a big, big show. I, again, I don't know how that translates now to streaming, but we'll see. They're, they're, they're definitely going for a broad demographic, much of which is not me. So... <laughs> I mean, there's really good shows sprinkled yeah. throughout this. It, it is interesting. It's yeah. like it's like bulk. Like they have big shows, like shows with ten plus seasons on there, all over the place. And we didn't even talk about The Office, which I guess is coming later. Later, yeah. Um, this seems like like it's just like you know network TV on a Friday daytime. TV shows, like all these things, like things in syndication that like you would be channel flipping and see one of them on and be like, all right, I'll leave it here for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the streaming service, uh, <laughs> which is a move. Like, I don't know. I, I, I guess like uh, my parents like Monk, Joe liked Monk. I check out Monk, but like I've seen half of these things and I have no interest in the other half. Um, so it's like, do I want to rewatch some old comfort food? Uh, maybe. It's free. There's a free tier. I like that. I mean, look, you know, uh, I do that with Netflix. I'm like, do I want to watch these new things on Netflix or am I just going to uh, restart, you know, something I've already watched a million times on Netflix? And if that's your play for Peacock and it's and the should I just restart blank is like really top tier. Should I restart content? Yeah, like that's a pretty good play. No, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. um, they've also just to wrap uh, this part up. They also have the George Lopez show. Which uh, and all our insights uh, brought to you by uh, a, a very great uh, document that our own Eric Goldman uh, made for us for research. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Thank you, Eric. The George Lopez Show, which also uh, similar to Two and a Half Men, um, uh, has no prior NBC Universal he uh, history. That and Everybody Loves Raymond, which they also picked up as sort of a free agent play, which also a very underrated show. Oh yeah, There's more people. There, <laughs> there really good. Love Raymond. Um, um, my wife. Wait, the, uh, I've never uh, seen it. <laughs> <laughs> my wife. <laughs> hey, has anybody seen my wife? <laughs> I um, the the urban legend story I know about everyone loves Raymond. I have no idea if this is true, but I want it to be. So I'm just gonna say it, and it's on the internet now. It's true. When Brad Garrett um, auditioned for Everybody Loves Raymond. Uh, his original take on Raymond's brother was like for the audition was he was very like mad and sort of like a little Raymond? more average. Yeah, this Raymond. And um, the uh, they were like, hey, that was great. If we can give you like a redirect, um, he's less angry and he's more just accepted the fact that he's the second favorite son and that Raymond gets everything and he's just sort of over it and like that's just life. And he was like, oh, okay, so like, like Eeyore. So I mean, uh, and they were, uh, 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 they were like, so you know, a little more like depressed. And he was like, like Eeyore. And they're like, yeah, try try doing it like Eeyore. And he was like, I am Eeyore. And they were like, perfect, go with that. And he was like, no, I'm the voice of Eeyore. <laughs> like, oh, then yeah, just do exactly just do Eeyore. Eeyore. <laughs> Amazing. So, no idea if that's true, but uh, it is it. now because I said it. You're gonna love me. <laughs> They've also, <laughs> oh, so look they. Uh, I'm just, uh, they've also definitely uh, got my father-in-law because they have all the A&E and history stuff. Cold Case Files, First 48, mm -hmm. Storage Wars, American Pickers, Ancient Aliens, Curse of Oak Island, Pawn Stars, Project Blue Book. He's in. All right. Oh, they, man, uh, this is, it's just a channel of things for me to clean my house to. That's oh, fantastic. Okay. Look, oh, just... I want some Storage Wars. I love Storage Wars, yeah. Storage Wars the, is the, the guy with the gloves. Club guy. Yep. Love Do they ever combine storage drawers and cold case files where they open up a storage locker and it's full of bodies? <laughs> that would be... <laughs> and that becomes a cold case file. <laughs> That'd be really incredible, actually. That should be a you gotta show. figure there's some of them, yeah. Yeah, I mean, statistically, you'd think they'd found a body by now. Yeah. Or someone just living in it. <laughs> oh, they've definitely chased some hobos out of those storage... Comp like, there's pro there is definitely an underpaid uh, producer uh, producer uh, in title on Storage Wars, whose job is to open up the storage container ahead of time and chase out. Scram, like, scram. Yeah, hey, <laughs> he's got like a, <laughs> with a broom. <laughs> he's got a push broom. Um, there's definitely that. Uh, stuff for the kids. Uh, DreamWorks Dragons, they've got the old school He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, She-Ra, Princess of Power. 
uh, Land Before Time, Madagascar, and Curious George. Um, that's a weird mix of children's programming, uh, but they got it. Yep. So I'm going to take a moment, say hi, thanks for watching. Um, I think we got a Hey Phantom at some point this week, but the details aren't confirmed yet, so we'll let you know about it later. Um, <laughs> Or I Ryan can see Ryan will... frantically typing in the script. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wednesday. Or Ryan will jump in and be like, Joe, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> you moron. Uh, so they've got a bunch of new stuff at launch uh, as well. Um, Intelligence, uh, starring David Schwimmer. It's a comedy about a U.S. NSA agent who's sent to work in the U.K. Uh, 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 Bra an adaptation of Brave New World, a uh, British crime drama called The Capture. Um, a, uh, a docuseries hosted by Dale Earnhardt Jr., which, holy crap, I'm excited about that, just instantly. Okay. Um, uh, a made-for-TV movie um, uh, based on Psych, and then uh, a, Weir a Where's Waldo uh, animated series. But sort of the big thing to talk about at launch is that there's two key things missing for Peacock at launch. Uh, one is The Office. So let's talk about The Office, because they spend a ton of money on The Office and they don't have it at launch, which sucks, mm -hmm. which sucks a lot. Um, I, I mean, is the, I'm not, I, I'm like the one person who's never watched The U.S. Office, like on the whole team. So wow. is wow. the strength of The Office, like where Office goes, you follow? It's a pretty big get. Like it's, uh, I mean, it's, I know people who will end one rewatch of The Office and then immediately start another rewatch of The Office. And again, it's one of those ones where um, for no good reason, all of a sudden everyone on the internet will be talking about a particular episode and like going back and watching it and tweeting about it. It is, um, it is just kind of a pervasive uh, piece of media. And it's probably, you know, obviously like one of the, the most if not the most popular uh both popular and critically acclaimed shows uh in you know this last like 10 years or whatever uh the office is i, I there are definitely people who th they'll see the office and say okay well that combined with in deep with ryan lotke um is enough for me to to do this for you know five dollars or whatever it's a huge series and i do think along with other tent poles because it's not when you when you consider you have the office you've got all the law and orders for the people who like the two and a half men you've got that you've got your frasers on the strength of the office and fraser alone i think that you'll you will get people who will pay the money for this monthly or at least do the free tier um whatever that winds up really being yeah the thing is like the office is an all-time great show joe and you gotta watch it man it's i like, know it's great um for like six seasons it's fantastic uh but if you're gonna, if you want it like without ads and you just want The Office forever, I haven't done the math, but it's gotta be like, I don't know, 50, 60, maybe 70 bucks to just buy the whole series at this point, yeah. right? Well, see, I wonder, cause sometimes um, it has been the case and I wish I had something off the top of my head to cite it, where, cause Warner Media owns it, uh, I believe that they, they were the, the production company, if they are the production company or if they have an agreement, they might make it where DVD sales is not a thing where you, except for used copies, you might not be able to get it new when it comes on there because they want people to focus on it being on the the network. I mean, so I'm not old enough. Good. I'm not uh, uh, even, I'm not gonna pretend to uh, buy something on DVD. I I'm talking just like on iTunes, like you can oh, yeah, yeah. probably get it digitally for, I don't know. It can't, it, it can't be like, it, it, I, I will bet you it's less than a year's worth of Peacock to just buy every episode of The Office less than 120 bucks um so at the, at, if you're really just in it for the office like just buy the show that you like if none of this other yep. stuff is doing it for you but you know if they can catch you they're casting a pretty wide net if it's like oh i love the office and like you know what 30 rocks good and uh, i don't know i'm uh, i have a weird uncle that made me watch punky brewster uh let's <laughs> check out that reboot <laughs> like, i don't know <laughs> It seems kind of scattershot. Uh, so not having that sucks. And uh, uh, or the office from the start kind of sucks. Uh, but uh, I think a, a, a chunk of people will follow it wherever it goes. Well, there's one other thing that they don't have at launch, and we'll get to it uh, right after I update you on Hey Fandom. <laughs> uh, we've got a Hey Fandom on Wednesday, you guys. I was, I was like, I don't know if it's official yet or not. It's my fault. Uh, my bad. 
Oh, no, not not your fault at all. Ryan, nothing is your fault. You're a beautiful baby boy, and I love you very much. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Janet Varney, the voice of Korra from Legends of Korra, is joining us um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time before SJU on Wednesday. So get up a little earlier or, you know, you guys live uh, all over the world. So uh, adjust your time accordingly uh, and uh, hang out with Janet Varney a little bit. She's great. She's uh, she did. Um, I think it was a TV fight we did at some point and it was uh, we did all Avatar questions. It was Janet and uh, Hector Navarro. And um, they had to argue which show is better. And Janet, Ar uh, Hector argued for Korra, and Janet argued for Avatar. And it was just a great, that's awesome, fun conversation. Yeah, it, it, it was awesome. She's she's really fantastic. She's super funny. Uh, she's been uh, doing some work with uh, that there, Daniel Radford's uh, as well on the Great Debate recently. By the way, you guys should watch the Great Debate on Sci-Fi. Daniel <laughs> voices a robot. Yeah, what are you guys doing? Uh, watch it. Um, <laughs> You should absolutely watch it. But yeah, anyway, that Hey Fandom, there's a link uh, in the description uh, to RSVP and sign up. Uh, these have been uh, a lot of fun. And if you want to watch the other ones, they're over on fandom.com. Hey, guys, the other thing that Peacock is not launching with, the cock does not have the Olympics. Uh, they also thought they were launching with, that's why it's randomly launching uh, in the middle of the summer, because it was scheduled to be the big thing they were going to launch with was the was the Summer Olympics, which uh, got coroned out of existence. That sucks. Yeah. yeah, that sucks. I love a good uh, uh, Summer Olympics. Like you leave that on all day if you have it, and like yeah, you yeah. And yeah. Watch, watch some discus and get like way too invested in one random event, and then never think about it for four years. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. that's my favorite part. Is like, and again, that, that's an internet thing where all of a sudden, for some reason, we will all decide like this is the year we really pay attention to archery or whatever. And obviously, the opening and closing ceremony are always really fun, and. I mean, for me, obviously I like watching it. My favorite part of the Olympics um, are all of the stories uh, of the things that come out and what people do in the Olympic Village, but, cause those are always fun. But yeah, like that's, uh, it is one of those cultural things where it feels like, the, you know, there isn't as much um, import put on which country is the best country is just cause I feel like everyone just finds one person from whatever country and decides that that's who they're gonna vote for. It's like when that Canadian, well, it's like when those, uh, that, that Canadian figure skating team, we all decided they were a couple and it didn't matter what country you were in, you wanted them to win cause you were hoping they would like make out on the ice. And little stories <laughs> like that uh, drive the Olympics. And so I am bummed that we're gonna miss that because it does become uh, these series of little minute uh, dramas that are real, you know. Plus, uh, yeah, that archery, man. Who does that archery? The Gina, who, Gina Davis is going to make it one year. I feel like the the archery, and here I, I can already hear the archery nerds yelling at me about this. <laughs> those bows, <laughs> those bows look like they're doing a lot of the work. They, they, those bows are like they look like like mechazords that are like uh, you know built out of I think carbon. That's fair. I, 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 I want to see long bows and like I want I want to see old school. I, I think they should have to build the bow they use. Um, that I, would help it be more. I agree with you. I, I think uh, that goes along with these weird bodysuits that the swimmers wear. These weird, like, fish skin merman <laughs> battle armor <laughs> suits that that swimmers get to wear now. It's like you should be you should be wearing the same swimsuit that they were wearing in like 1920 with the cap and the suspenders. And they all and have to wear Vulcan board shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Say, yeah, true. I think that's the only way that you, you equalize it. I agree. And if, yeah. if they fall off and you still finish, then you are automatically second place. <laughs> yeah. so. no, you're right, though, Spencer. Those bows are like, that's the equivalent of like, uh, yeah, we went we went hunting and I, I took eight machine guns. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> it on. might actually be harder to use. The, I have no idea. It might take like, you know, uh, a Herculean strength. But the fact is, like, I don't know. I don't know what that bow. What's that bow? What's up with that bow? Come What's on. That yeah. What's up with that bow? <laughs> Give me a piece of wood and a string. And does I would watch a 10 Bono minute boats? explanation. Yeah, I'd watch a 10 minute explanation where they tell us about the bows. Because they probably also, do. That's also the fun part of the Olympics is that when they do, there's so much things, there's so many things that have to be covered, but also uh, there are these gaps in coverage where they're like, uh, Americans aren't going to care about this. So now here's where we bring in Kathy Griffin to, tell, to get drunk and tell us, you know, what she thinks about the bows. And those moments are also really, really fun and really memeable. And again, it's 
especially right now, I mean, we can't do it for this reason, but if there was a way that we could do social distance Olympics where everyone's just doing it from their house, um, it would be it, it would be the perfect thing right now. We're all uh, stuck inside. I would love that just an archer in their backyard on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it! Nailed it! <laughs> Yeah, I mean, That's you could just great. do the Olympics without uh, America. Um, that would work. <laughs> that would work fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, I think that, that, that that's everyone's reward for actually uh, staying inside and using masks and not being dumb, is uh, they get to do the Olympics. And that way you get maybe some countries that don't always get, maybe someone gets to win basketball for a change it's, instead right. of our, our weird unfair dream teams. Um, hey, guys, you want to see what chat's saying a little bit? Yeah, we do. Saying sure. some things. Uh, Michael Parker said, you know, a bright side of quarantine is more time to catch up on famous shows that uh, he's never properly gotten into, uh, which I agree. I kind of think that's what we've been saying with like, this is the, yeah, I'll binge that streaming service. The like, oh, this is on? Okay. So it's time to watch Monk, Michael, if you've never watched Monk. Uh, more people need to put respect on Tony Shalhoub's name. Uh <laughs> Definitely. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Claire Vineyard said, okay, but how many people rewatch The Office because their Netflix app is pinned and they just want a comfort watch? Mm. I agree totally. I think comfort watch is big right now. And yeah, this, there's a whole lot of comfort watch on here. Yeah, Netflix um, is just the default app to open up, sadly. Yeah. Uh, even though like I check back and there's nothing new I want to watch on it. But yeah, but I, it is I still, still the first one you open. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and they, I, I still got a... They still bury their stuff, man. It's so weird. Uh, uh, what was the the Charlie's the, the old guard? Old nowhere to be found. Uh, mm. I had to dig for it. Mm. So weird to me. It's like that's the big movie you just dropped, and that's I'm I'm digging through your like D tier uh, uh, Korean soap operas to find it. I, that doesn't make any sense. Well, that that might just be your streaming though. Yeah, I think the algorithms <laughs> cracked you. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah, I did this to myself. <laughs> like, uh, fell in love with Good Morning Call, and uh, is what I got to deal with. D. A. Baraka says, "Lol, I used to do archery. This show has become <laughs> a conversation between us and D. A. So, Ryan, make sure you're pulling D. A. stuff out of the chat. I used an old school bow because it was cheaper. Did not want to spend money on a big money bow. Oh, I'm for one thing, big money bow is something. I'm big money bow." Um, <laughs> So, D. Brackus, uh, uh, hit us in chat and answer this question. Do the big money bows make a difference? Like, do, do they, they do most of the work for you? Yeah. Do they, you know? like, are, are they laser sighting? Are they like a, a visual gag in a Mel Brooks Robin Hood movie uh, <laughs> where someone gets the bullseye because they pull out a big money bow? Uh, answer our questions about bows. And while we're gathering uh, in, uh, <laughs> some, some bow intel, uh, we have a little bit of a story, too. Did either of you watch the last season of Clone Wars? No. Yeah. No. Not okay. Yet. No shame if you didn't. I just feel bad that this has been a Joe Rambles episode, and yeah. I'm going to continue. To Ramble on, Joe. Ramble on. Ramble on. Say my song. No. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. We need. We need a new band that is just obsessed with the fantasy franchise. Isn't that like most metal? Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> But like a specific fan, like I just, uh, I don't know. Dark Materials metal band. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or uh, or actually, no, not a metal band. I think um, like R&B or something needs to take the torch and just, um, yeah. Trapped like, in the Shire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I, I, I want uh, Boys to Men to have like a Witcher concept album or Ooh, something like that. I think okay. that, would be, that would be great. Um, hey, new Star Wars. You guys excited? But of course you it? are. What is it? Uh, yeah, so, so, much. There a, so there was a group in the last season of Clone Wars called the Bad Batch, and they were sort of this like uh, dirty dozen of uh, clone troopers who something had gone weird with their um, cloning, and they all were kind of enhanced. One of them had super sight, one of them was super strong, that kind of thing. So they're kind of like this weird mutant team, uh, and they're getting their own uh, uh, spinoff and their own animated spinoff. Are they some kind of suicide squad? Is what you're saying? They are a bit of a suicide squad. I'm, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> is that um, what you're telling me? <laughs> some kind of bad batch? <laughs> what are we, some kind of bad batch? Um, and uh, like I was telling Ryan before we got started, now I understand the funny graphic that Logan, our social guy, made on the Screen Junkies Twitter earlier because I hadn't seen the bad batch announcement. And I was like, I don't understand this Lizzo joke. 
um, he did the logo, and it was like you could have had a Bad Batch. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah. good, good job, good, um, job, good job, Logan. Here's your roses. Um, yeah, and this is fine. the the weird The weird thing to me was like, you'd think that if your job was to make a clone army, and you accidentally made a clone that was freakishly strong, you would just start making them all that. Sounds like a uh, good batch to me. Yeah, sounds like a good man. More like a <laughs> more like a useful batch. <laughs> You guys seen these clones? They're uh, they're strong and uh, smarter. <laughs> Sounds like uh, we made a good batch. <laughs> I hope Norm Macdonald is like the Werner Herzog of the show and is just narrating it. <laughs> See, they're better. That's why we call them good. <laughs> really, right now I'm just cutting time. I'm, I'm just killing time until Baracus tells us more about bows. D. A. Baracus, come back and tell us more about. I haven't bows. seen him, but we, we need we need you. Uh, he went outside and he's just he's just shooting bullseyes right now. He's like, oh, that's <laughs> enough for me. He's just outside. And well, so I have fly. I have bad batch questions. Um, so are they like are are they are they is one of those things where they escaped and they're no longer with the Empire and they're off doing their own A team stuff or? Yeah, so I think it seems like um, they are. Da, 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 da. Yeah, so this is the immediate aftermath of the Clone War. So the Empire's taking over and they're sort of they've run off and they're doing their own thing. So yeah, it seems it seems like they're a teaming in a time of uh, in in a time of the empire. I like that. That could be really interesting. Um, I, again, I like anything where it's and, and granted, this is still you know uh, empire centric, but I like anything that focuses on weird corners of the universe. And if there's just you know five versions of one guy, and you have one that's like a tank and one that's a bard, and you know what I mean? like that could be really interesting to me, where you have uh, essentially one guy who plays all of the roles in your D and D squad. That could be really cool. Just goes yeah. around the universe. Almost, yeah. it's like it's like playing D and D with yourself, oh. which I've you never gotten. Uh, if you are. Really lonely and uh, uh, nervous about people at your high school knowing that you're a dork, and, but you also still want to do it. Maybe, maybe you could. I, I could ask around. <laughs> <laughs> I had a friend who did it once. In yeah, he was, <laughs> that guy. Ask, <laughs> your friend in Canada. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Panthor says, and uh, that's the reason those four episodes were included in the last season of Clone Wars. They were a backdoor pilot. Mm -hmm. I think we got to pay real strong attention to every star wars thing that disney plus does because they're all backdoor pilot and something i think they're being real smart in how they sort of set that stuff up uh hey we got more bow talk let's uh let's go out on some more bow talk you guys yes, uh Brack is, uh he has specified with the big money bows more power and accuracy with modern compound bows but using old school uh makes you feel cooler and more like robin hood and that's where i want to be that's yeah, right. I want to be more like Robin Hood. Yeah, I think that um, the the key to the Olympics is like for these sports that we frankly don't watch for four years is like making it relatable to the person watching so you can understand how amazing it is what these athletes are doing. And the best pitch I ever heard was to have among the Olympic athletes, just a regular schmuck uh, to also <laughs> participate, just to show you how difficult it is, like like a pace car, but like sad, like <laughs> to see what a normal swimmer looks like next to this, or what a normal guy with a bow looks like next to this. And like, in lane like, nine, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> like Dave, Dave swims sports, on the weekends. Yeah. Like Dave, Dave, not like uh, uh, someone who's super out of shape, but like a regular hobbyist uh, of one of these sports just so you can see how amazing it really is I, I want this for all sports i want it to be where like just someone who is really good at his like sports touch football league gets to go on the field and see what that's like um i want someone who like nails it at the local pizzeria's um uh softball team to get to go up there and just lob pitches and see what happens yeah um, that would i don't think rather do that than the olympics you set yourself up though for like the amazing like rocky moment where somebody like goes right. on and and you know maybe for one of the more luck-based things like they win the gold medal <laughs> who knows yeah honestly I'd, I'd 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 rather just every country send their dave uh, <laughs> yeah. their <hobbyist> dave. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's that's more compelling than just you know these people that like from the day they were born some coach was just like all you'll care about is little routines that is all <laughs> Um, you know, yeah, uh, give me, give me those Daves and maybe one badass as, <laughs> as a reverse pace car. <laughs> Guys, we've come to the end of our, uh, uh, there's, there's one more question, uh, uh, to be answered. Uh, are you two going to go with the, uh, the lesser tier with ads 
normal version of a bow version of peacock or are you going with the big compa compound bow uh peacock with no ads there's no way i'm paying for this uh no. right off the bat there's nothing new uh, like I said, uh, I like the things I've seen on that list and the things I haven't, I have zero interest in. So to watch with commercials, to watch some reruns, fine. Um, but I I would see myself paying like 50 bucks to just buy The Office before I'd sign up for Peacock. And, right. and I, I looked it up, you can still, you can definitely buy those uh, digitally on Amazon. Uh, you, they have all seasons. And I, you know, and the two, because even the two of the biggest announcements that they made for new shows were Saved by the Bell, Zach's a governor, and uh, <laughs> Punky Brewster, she's an adult now. And those were their like two of their biggest shows they announced. And even those, I'm kind of like, eh. And they're not even going to be out yet for a while because obviously everything has stopped. And it's, right. that's kind of like the biggest you know, thing that you had. And it was already pretty meh because I don't know who was begging for. I don't know who those shows are for because they are uh, they are for me because those are shows that I watched when I was a kid and I don't want them. So I don't know who those are for. And those were two of the biggest. And I mean the, hu the huge announcements. They made very big deals out of both of them, and we're not even getting those. And when we do, it's still a big meh for me. So yeah, I can't imagine I'm paying for this. Well, uh, I think that takes us out. Uh, hey, Spencer, uh, hey. cock rock song about uh, archery in the Olympics, go. <laughs> What's on my bow? I need to know, cause you're shooting arrows to my heart. <laughs> That's our show guys, see you tomorrow. <laughs>